Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we are going to look at what I think are the three most disturbing, creepy stories about the Flood from Halo's Expanded Universe. From their first sighting, to the way they physically and mentally torture their infected hosts. Get ready to take what is already terrifying about the Flood and multiply it by 7 billion. But real quick before we start the video, I want to announce that for this video, I've partnered with Amino. So Amino is an app that has a massive network of communities that span pretty much every Every interest possible, from sneakers to zombies to good old fashioned Halo. So, when you join an Amino community, like the Halo one, for example, you can talk to other people via text or voice chat, browse the Halo wiki, read official Halo news, check out awesome fan art and fiction, take part in super satisfying quizzes with constantly updating leaderboards and constantly fresh topics, and even more. If you want to check out Amino, then the link is right at the top of the description. When you click that link, you can choose to download Amino on whichever platform is suitable for you, and it'll take you straight to the Halo community on there. But anyways, let's dive into the three most disturbing Flood stories in the Halo universe. Number three, Summer the Painter. Summer the Painter is a beautifully terrifying story because it tells the beginning of the end of the Foreigners from the viewpoint of someone so unprepared and defenseless. The story focuses on a foreigner called Summer, who chose to give up her power armor, her weapons, and her hyper-intelligent life-guiding AI to live out the rest of her days in a more primitive manner on a planet called Seaward. Now, Seaward was a planet right on the edge of known space. It's the last stop before the null and void of interstellar space, and it essentially acted as a rich person's getaway a secret planet that nobody in the general or government populace even knew about, owned by some very rich, very secretive foreigners. The kicker is that it had no ties to the rest of the foreigner civilization. That means no communications, no travelers stopping by, no government officials checking in on it, absolutely no ties to the rest of the galaxy whatsoever. And that makes this story even more frightening. The story follows Summer painting the sunset with her jet brush, which is essentially a futuristic paintbrush that paints what it can see. Now, she's waiting for this perfect moment where the two suns of Seaward meet and create this beautifully blinding array of colours in the sky so bright that she has to close her eyes while the brush paints it. As the two suns meet, the sky gets so bright that Summer has to close her eyes and in the background, the jet brush does the painting for her. When she opens her eyes, she looks at the board that she was painting on, and all of the colours are there. All the beautiful array of colours are there on the page. But there was something else present. A dark imperfection, bursting through the clouds with a sickly yellow smoke trailing behind it, had been painted. Summer checked the sky, thinking that maybe it was just a glitch with her brush. But lo and behold, that imperfection was still there and it was slowly crashing down towards seaward surface. After 10,000 years of absence, the Flood had returned. Seaward then went on to be the first planet of millions to be infected by the Flood. It was totally defenseless and was overwhelmed, infected, and turned into a diseased rock in no time whatsoever, and it acted as the beginning of the end of one of the most advanced species in the history of the Halo universe. Number 2, Defender of the Storm. Defender of the Storm is one of the few Flood stories in the Halo canon that's like a good old fashioned proper zombie survival horror story and it's why it's one of my favourites. So the story follows a foreigner warrior servant called Adequate Observer who's stationed on board a foreigner gas mine, pretty much like that one that we went to in Halo 2. The story set towards the end of the Foreigner Flood War, which was an extremely bleak time for the Halo universe, considering the Flood had pretty much consumed everything in multiple galaxies. Surrounding the central hub of the mining facility are several weather vanes, and every three weeks the guards have to go and patrol the weather vanes to make sure they're safe and secure. And also, every year, a transport ship comes to the mine to exchange guards and workers to go and fight the Flood. 
After 15 years of passing it off, this was finally going to be the year that Adequate Observer clocked out of the mine and finally joined the exciting fight against the Flood on the front lines. He'd been seeing these weird avian creatures through the windows recently, and despite his AI saying that he wasn't seeing anything, it was starting to creep him out because birds shouldn't exist. In weather as volatile as the weather surrounding the mining hub, there's no way that birds could possibly exist there. However, when the transport ship arrived, so did the Flood. Adequate watched from the monitors in the central hub as the Flood ravaged the outer veins, infecting his friends and killing his acquaintances as they spread throughout the facility. After trying and failing to save one of his friends in vein 2, he got trapped as the door to the hub locked. And then, to get back to the central hub, he had to crawl through these tight, dark ventilation shafts, with all of the exits blocked by various combat forms, the sounds of them echoing throughout the shafts. When he made it back to the central hub, he ultimately found out that everyone on board the station was sent to the mine to die fighting the Flood. Their entire purpose was to die and distract the Flood. The reason being, those bird things that Adequate thought he saw through the windows were real, and he did actually see them. They had the ability to survive in extremely harsh weather. If the Flood were able to infect these and use them, they'd be extremely dangerous. So the mine was created and put there almost as a decoy to draw the Flood away from the center of the planet where the birds lived, and instead towards these fresh foreigner hosts on board the station. After dealing with the revelation that the mine essentially acted as death row for the Flood, Adequate scuttled the station, sending it plummeting to the center of the planet and killing all the Flood on board, and destroying all of the biomass they'd accumulated. However, Adequate somehow survived the fall and was stuck in the eye of the storm, with nothing but his AI and the bird creatures to keep him company forevermore. And in the number one spot, we have the infection and death of Private Wallace Jenkins. Okay, so this one is without a doubt the creepiest and most disturbing flood story because it goes into the raw details of the infection process. The physical and psychological torture that the infection form puts a host under is experienced through the eyes of Private Wallace Jenkins, the guy who recorded the initial outbreak on Installation 04 during Halo Combat Evolved, the guy who watched everybody apart from Sergeant Johnson get infected. During that initial outbreak, everybody in his squad, aside from Johnson of course, was infected, but the infection form that infected Jenkins was quite old from being stored for so long and it was weak, so it didn't properly infect him. During infection, the infection form normally kills the host and then infects it, but in the case of Jenkins, it didn't kill him. So that means that he became like 90% combat form and remained like 10% Wallace Jenkins. He could still control himself partly, but most of the time he had to just sit there and watch as the infection form controlled all but his mind. Under no control of his own, Jenkins' body was taken to the surface with a load of other combat forms to attack a group of ODSTs, and whenever he got the chance, Jenkins tried to get himself killed. He'd take over the infection form and try and walk towards the fire, but he failed to do so and was captured and interrogated by the ODSTs. Before this, he'd also tried to throw himself off a cliff to commit suicide because the physical and mental torture was too much, but every time he got to the edge of the cliff, the infection form would regain control and make him walk back. It's quite a disturbing situation. During the interrogation, the infection form kept regaining control, attempting to attack the ODSTs by extending a tentacle out of Jenkins' arm, snapping his bones, bursting his veins, and tearing his skin, creating immense physical pain, well, as you'd imagine. <laughs> but occasionally, the pain would knock the infection form out, which gave Jenkins a tiny opportunity to gain physical control back, during which he tried to desperately tell the ODSTs about the true horror and potential of the Flood. Jenkins also actually managed to save Earth. He informed the ODSTs, who were going to use the Truth and Reconciliation to get back to Earth, not to use it and not to take it to Earth because it was heavily infested by the Flood, and doing so would cause a massive outbreak and ultimately the fall of Earth, so instead, they destroyed it, wiping out a shitload of Flood on board and finally laying Private Wallace Jenkins to rest, free of his parasitical torture. 
So, they are three of the most disturbing, creepy stories about the flood. If you want to read any of them, then I've included the books that they're from in the description, so check them out. They're definitely worth reading. The source material is very good for all three of them. Just know that if you're going to read the source material, you're going to get even more creeped out than you are when you watch my videos, so uh, be prepared. I want to give a big usual thank you to the homies over on Patreon for the massive support. Ardent Prayer, Tomahawk, Taylor Hayden, Evan McBride, Chris G, Jack Madden, and Stefan Kursik. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the big support. And also, everybody else who supports and donates to me on there as well, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.